Today we are told to repent, to prepare the way, to be ready for the one who comes. Today we are also warned to show our repentance with good fruit. The warning comes across harshly in both the Gospel reading, where John the Baptist shouts down some Pharisees and Sadducees, and in the first reason, uh, reading where Isaiah warns of the coming judgment. But the warning is fair, and truly we can say that we have been warned and we have had time to follow through. I think of the second letter of Peter, where he says that the Lord is not slow in coming, but rather merciful and patient in giving us time to repent. When John the Baptist warns the people in the Gospel today, he refers to the first coming of Jesus and the true baptism by the Spirit and by fire which Jesus brings. The readings brought me to a place of recollection where I thought of all the sinfulness of my life and how at any time during those moments of sin, God could have uh, taken me. I know that's a bit morbid, and it's, uh, but, but it's true. I think on this, at one point in my life, I claimed not to believe in God. I mocked the faith, lived in lust, and generally suffered from alcoholism. Many of you have probably heard my tale of those times. I ask you, what if I had met God's judgment at that time in my life? What would have been God's response to my life? Had I produced good fruit? While shoulds, woulds, and coulds are not always helpful for positive outlooks in life, I believe that this time, this would, led me to a feeling of gratitude. The Lord was not late in taking me, nor late in keeping his promise of returning. He was patient and merciful in desiring my repentance. I thank the Lord daily for my life of sobriety today. So now I'm living the upright life, the just life of producing good fruit, right? My job is over. Lord, take me, I am ready. Well, perhaps we'll just assume that I'm ready. <laughs> Assuming that I am ready, I have done what concerns me. I am good uh, to wait for the Lord's return. I think that the, that the warning today, uh, given in the readings, should motivate us to reach out to others. It's not enough to prepare ourselves alone. We have only to look to the example of John the Baptist and all the other prophets who came before him. The prophets called out from the desert, called the people back to the Lord. The prophets were themselves holy people, but they did not leave it at that. They went out to others and tried to prepare them too. Now this last thought seems uh, to be an example of preaching to the choir. We do ministry, we go out to the people, we work on ourselves so that we can help others, etc. Here's the question then. What happened to all those prophets? What happened to John the Baptist? What happened to Jesus? And then think, why did it happen? The prophets, John the Baptist, Jesus, and all the martyrs to present day preached repentance from the comfortable life, from mammon. Preparing the way often looked like fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. Jesus called people to leave everything behind and follow him, meaning go to the sick, the poor, the abandoned, all the people were not comfortable around, and be with them. The saints brought an uncompromising gospel to people who were comfortable in their old ways. In fact, they preferred to kill the messengers than give up the comfortable. This is the strength of what is comfortable. This is the terror of our old ways. So perhaps I'm not ready. Perhaps I'm too comfortable, too set in my ways to really claim I'm authentically following Jesus, let alone bringing anyone else to him. Am I willing to be a prophet in this world? How about in this country? Am I willing to be a prophet in this community? It is all fine until it's the ones we love who may not accept us. That comfort, acceptance, I truly fear losing. Today we are told to repent, to prepare the way, to be ready for the one who comes. Today we are also warned, 
Shall we heed the warning?